Welcome everyone to a very special video and as you can see I'm still trying to keep my voice down I have attempted to soften this room up um, so the audio isn't bouncing off everything but it's not happening it's nothing can stop it uh, moving on this is a special video called Diary of a YouTuber which is a tag video and I was tagged by Luke over at Reservoir Reviews and I'll be giving my to him later on in the video I haven't seen this done before and it's a really good idea uh, so basically 12 questions have been set and they all relate to YouTube and uh, the person who makes the videos and people's thoughts on making them, watching them and the YouTube culture that's there and what you like about it and what you don't like about it. So yes, here is the first question and it is how long have you been on YouTube? Now this is a really good question because I'm very sporadic in my life with interests. I usually go on and off things like little fetuses sometimes but you know that must be that one thing I've always stuck to. But anyway, uh, so I've been on this channel for about two months, over two, no, over two months, nearly nearly three months, I would say, two and a half months or so. Um, but in general, I have been on YouTube for about five years. Um, and I split it into f five phases, basically. So phase one was about 2009, 2010. Silly uploads of content that wasn't mine, you know little animations or funny videos and I also did stick figure animations with a little program called Pivot if anyone's heard of it I, I really wanted to be an animator for a while and that ties in with one of my later channels uh, two of my later channels actually um, I wanted to be an animator but I couldn't draw so I always tried to do stop motion or, or something on the computer because I'm a terrible drawer but you know I think I have an okay imagination when it comes to making something on the computer where I um, I seem to have a good ability at. So phase one, yeah, was basically little animations, silly stick figure things. Do you mind, train? So phase two began in 2011, I think it would have been around January or February or something. It was when I got my new computer, I think. It was actually before I got my computer, actually. But basically I wanted to do graphic design for some reason and I got this program called Cinema 4D, which is a 3D uh, motion graphics uh, 3D animation program that you can do all different sorts of things in. It's a really good piece of software that I got quite handy with using tutorials. Uh, there's plenty of, that's another good thing about YouTube, there's plenty of good content on there to learn. Um, I basically taught myself to do all this and I also had these Photoshop and I, I wanted to do like little animations and motion graphics and I, I must have spent so much time and I'm sure my computer, I'm surprised my computer is still alive and all the rendering that I did. Um, but yeah, I really like doing motion graphics and like little intros and logos that I sometimes did for people. Um, that channel's still there. I'll actually, I'll put a link right here for you. GX Media Studios, that's called. Um, my allegations, I think some of them are pretty crap, but I, I'm kind of proud of some of the, the logos that I did, especially the, my own logo intro. Phase 3, around the same time in my graphic design channel, I also made a animation channel where I uploaded cartoons. Um, because, as I said, I wanted to be an animator, and this sort of tied in with it. I just, I know it's childish, but I really enjoyed cartoons, and I mean, revisiting them when I was 14, 15, you know, watching them on. I, I just loved what, the imagination they had, and loads of them are still funny, you know. I'm pretty sure anyone here can still say that they laugh at Looney Tunes, because, you know, that style of humour is just hilarious. And it's always interesting to see how some cartoons, you know, sometimes reflect on what's going on at the time, the society at the time. For instance, cartoons in the 30s in America, some of the cartoons sort of tied in with what was going on at the time in the economy of the, the Great Depression, and stuff like that. And I think it's really interesting to see stuff like that. And I love all cartoons, you know, not just because it was part of my childhood, but you know, it's I always like watching some cartoons, whether it's Disney or Max Fleischer or, or Warner Brothers cartoons, but anyway, rambling there. Yes, well that was my phase three, Animation Forever, that was called. Um, over a year and a half I uploaded over 300 cartoons, I think it must have been up to 350 or something. So, and I put lots of effort into organising it. I had every video in a certain way, I had certain tags, um, playlists and all that. I always wanted to be nice and structured because I wanted to make like an archive of cartoons and I really, I mean, it was amazing to see how many people commented, subscribed because I was either the first or second, at least top five YouTubers who uploaded cartoons. 
I had millions of views by the end of it and I had thousands of subscribers. I'm not sure how many, it must have been about, could be 3,000, 4,000, could be more than that, I'm not really sure. But it was one of the most popular cartoon uploaders and it was nice just to think that, you know, people were finding all these cartoons that, that they had watched as a kid. And I had lots of comments of people, you know, who might have been in their 40s, 50s, maybe even 60s, talking about how they watched these growing up in the 50s or 60s or so on. And I thought that was really interesting to hear uh, from people. And that's one thing I like about YouTube. So yeah, I wanted to make a, a big cartoon thing. I've always wanted to start it again, but I, you know, the effort, I just don't want to go to the effort again. And then the final phase would be phase four, uh, technically phase five as, as well. So I started this Film Master Tom channel in 2000 and, when was it? 2011, late 2011. And I don't know what I was really going for. I really wanted to talk about movies and stuff. I never really actually made any videos. I actually made a Blu-ray collection video, uh, really badly shot and badly voiceover DVD collection video. My voice sounds horrible in that. Um, my voice must have been still croaking or something. It just sounded really bad. So I didn't really do anything yet. I put up some collection videos. I tried to put up some old animations that I hadn't uploaded before. Um, so nothing really active there. But then I set up my Indie House Films channel around that same time, either that then or March in 2012, with a f an ex-friend who shared an interest of making videos and short films and stuff like that. And that was really fun to do. Um, that channel's still around and I still use it and I still look forward to using it. Um, basically, my goal was to uh, make independent level productions um, whether it's, you know, a skit video, a short film, music video, montage of nature, anything, any sort of entertainment basically on the channel. And I always tried to collaborate with people. I actually have a good friend um, that I have actually met before who done lots of the music for the channel and I'll be sure to keep in touch with him. Um, I'll see if I can put a link below to his channel. But he does a lot of the music. Uh, he done plenty of the music for lots of the short films that i done over the two years or so, up to now. Um, so yeah, Andy House Films basically I uploaded I, eight or nine of my short films. Um, I don't think any of them are really good. I would say only two or three of them I'm semi-proud of. Um, my most recent one was filmed uh, this, summer, this summer, so if you just want to watch that, go ahead. It's called Toasted. I wasn't very successful, but you know, I was happy with what I'd put up. I didn't really get many comments as I would hope to, but you know, that's what made me kind of think my reviews weren't very good, my content wasn't very good, but you know, I showed it to some friends and they think it's cool and funny or whatever, so that's kind of kept me going really. Um, I still just want to keep trying and trying to make something better, uh, like of course, like everyone really with any interest that they have. Um, I'm quite doubtful of myself, but you know, I always try to stride on and try and make something better or something I'm proud of. I'm still trying to get some more movie projects off the ground, you know, it's just getting everything together is such a hassle. But moving on, um, phase five technically, it's returning to this channel, Film Master Tom, which is what it's called. Um, so yes, as you have seen, two and a half months ago, three months ago, I thought to myself, I, I, I thought to myself, why not make a YouTube channel? Because I had been on Letterboxd for over a year, year and a half. And over the summer, I actually done about four marathons. I did a Sandy's marathon. I did a Woody Allen and anime marathon. I did a Japanese film marathon. Um, and then I did an exploration of Europe. And I did all reviews for these films, and they're all in lists on Letterboxd. And while I like doing the written reviews, because I think I seem to nail everything that I want to discuss better and analytically, in a written review. I like doing video reviews because there's something very fun and interactive with it and you know like documentary style I like making lists uh, or anything like that and basically talking about stuff and then putting images in to show what I'm talking about and I think that works really well. It's something I like to see in documentaries about movies or documentaries in general whenever you have voiceovers and you see people talking about stuff and you see images of it and that anchors it. Uh, I like doing that. So that's phase five. Yeah, I have a long history of YouTubing. Question two, finally we move on to. 
at what point do you think you will stop? I really don't know about this one because I've only started, so I don't think you should really think about stopping after starting. Um, but I would say, I would hope to say another 10 years or five years, but it really depends what I end up doing. Uh, I know next year, chances are I'll not be able to do as much videos uh, due to doing a placement year, which I don't know where it's gonna be yet, but it could be overseas, could be anything for university. Um, but I, I wanna keep the channel as long as I can because I, want, I just wanna talk about movies make videos about stuff that I care about when it comes to film and it's good just to discuss it because you know I don't have that many people to really talk about it with uh, I'm not saying I'm lonely or have no friends just you know lots of things like silent cinema for instance you know while lots of these films seem acclaimed not that many people talk about them not not as far as I know anyway I don't know that many people who really know who Chaplin is or cares about anything like that and I'm not saying that's a bad thing you know everyone has their own respective interests and I know they're kind of acquired interests uh, they're not as popular but you know it's good to be able to talk to th people about stuff that you, you're passionate about and you care about which is another reason YouTube is so great and I'll get on to that question later so yeah I don't know when I'll stop number three the best thing about YouTube excuse me well, I would say the best thing on YouTube is interacting with people, uh, engaging and discussing about things that you share the same interest with. And whether they agree with you or not, it's good to know that they've watched the video, they've engaged with it. Um, and they're all on the same page really, you know, they all love movies, it's a passion and it's something they want to discuss also, so it's always fun to see that. And I really love reading people's ex movie experiences um, and their interests, you know, it's, it's nice to see what some people have to say about you know certain films that they've seen in theaters or screenings and I especially love it whenever it's people who've uh, seen screenings of films that are very old you know whether it's 70s 80s or 90s you know something that I haven't got the experience you know I, I'm always quite jealous I always wish I could see all these films on the big screen it's my dream to really see all these kind of films on a big screen I'll have to have a home theater someday um, so that's number three and number four is the worst thing well all the shit that's on it, but that's to be expected. Without sounding vague, I will basically, you know, it's, it's something I've talked about before in 10 Things That Piss Me Off video, and just, I just hate the shit that's on YouTube, just silly stuff, you know, people being overly cocky and energetic and just talking crap and narrowing their points down where they do jump cuts and all that. I'll get into that later. Um, so I don't like that stuff, but you know, that's expected. It's nothing really that really makes me angry but yeah that's one thing I don't like. Five. How many thumbnail options do you usually take? And I guess this means um, how many screenshots you would take in your video uh, when making your thumbnail, a uh, custom thumbnail. Uh, I'll go through the video usually to find a picture where I kind of look half sensible as I will do for this video. Um, and it's funny to watch how my face moves sometimes, it's just like, what am I doing? You know, sometimes my face is like this. And it's like, hi, is my face even moving like that, just in the middle of talking? I, you don't realise it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I do that. I usually get one or two, and then put it in. Number six is, do you have a YouTuber crush or YouTuber you watch outside of your community? I uh, don't have one, so I'm skipping that question altogether. Number seven, who's on your collab list, uh, collaboration video list? I would love to do collaboration with several YouTubers and it's something I always love to do on the internet, interact with people and make videos and movies. Um, at the moment I'd like to, to collaborate with a couple of people such as Luke over at Razor Wire Reviews, uh, Ryan Chathaway, who's also part of the Blu-ray Brothers, and Ian who, over at Forker Paul. I'd like to make a video with him at some stage. If if we ever do stuff like that. I don't really have anything in mind, but I think it would be cool to do some sort of movie marathon discussion video, which we have seen in the Blu-ray Brothers videos. Uh, definitely check out their channel, that's Luke, Ryan and Robbie. They do some amazing stuff, completely underrated. I mean, they're the people that deserve getting lots of views and commenters and stuff like that. Uh, they do great stuff. Definitely check uh, their stuff out. Lots of effort put into them and very entertaining and funny sometimes. Uh, what are you wearing on your bottom half? I am wearing jeans. Uh, why is that question there? I don't know. So, yeah, I'm wearing jeans, that is all. 
Number nine, how long do you actually take to click record? Sometimes I dive right into it, but first I usually assemble notes as I have done right now. I'm using them right now on my laptop. Um, before I did this take, there was two other takes. Um, I do find it hard to do uh, just one take videos because I usually jumble up my words or whatever. Sometimes I do pauses and then I kind of condense it down a bit so it's not just long pauses of me going like this. You know. Um, and I always kind of make things sound natural. I love written stuff. I liked doing written reviews. I used to have a blog as well. But, you know, doing a video is something more interactive. As I said, you can put in screenshots and talk. And, you know, sometimes it can be more entertaining to watch a video, someone talking about stuff. Um, but I usually just take notes and try to go natural with the video. Uh, there's lots of early takes, you know, before I get into the good take where I swear. And I think I should do a compilation of all my outtakes. It's outrageous how many I have already. I reckon it would span up to 9 or 10 minutes, probably. <laughs> Um, so that's that question. Number 10. How do you feel about the YouTube community and YouTube culture? This is a fantastic question and something I really look forward to talking to here. I really love it and at the same time I hate things in it, uh, which is to be expected. I'm fascinated with YouTube culture and you can tell what makes popular content popular. Uh, lots of people go on YouTube just because they're bored. And they go on for the lols, uh, just to really kill time and look at things that are funny. So, you know, silly videos, failed videos, people getting hurt, crazy Russian hacker, pranks in public, talking about mainstream topics and cutting your video off to make it seem more exciting, even though you're probably hollow. Uh, more on that later. Um, I hate lots of popular, the popular YouTubers with their content, not to say that they're all bad, I'm not just saying this out of envy because they're popular, you know, that's just a silly argument. Um, annoying accents, shitty content, horrible editing, just... Ugh. But let's be more positive now. What I really love about YouTube, um, it's just amazing to see what people do creatively. And, I mean, that's it's a thing that the internet has brought. And it's something that's happening more and more. People have been able to do independent projects, become more independent, make their own stuff, you know, whether it's a music video, um, a montage video of nature, a short film, uh, a sketch, an animation, you know, it's the amount of creativity that's actually out there that people don't realise, you know, lots of it's just people that are sitting in their bedrooms on their laptops or com computers and it's just something they have an interest in and they decide to make and create and it's always it's great to see that's really inspirational and I would say you know lots of the YouTube content that I've watched has been more inspirational to me than you know my favorite filmmakers like Kubrick and Chaplin and all that because you know there are people exactly like you you know they're ambitious but they haven't really got anywhere yet and they just really enjoy making things at home and doing stuff creatively and that's just something I've always wanted to do and I've always enjoyed doing in my spare time really creating stuff, you know, I've always found myself wanting to do something productive, if you could call this productive really. Um, I've always just wanted to, you know, create and do stuff. But yes, there's there's a, so much out there on YouTube to discover. Question 11. What's your secret to a successful channel? I have a list here. Be an asshole. Talk about stuff that all the cool kids like. Uh, hurt someone in a video for a prank or just to abuse someone in a mean-spirited way. Uh, embarrass yourself in public, you know, whether it's getting, whether it's scripting or screaming or making strange noises or asking people questions that, you know, are going to make them uncomfortable and get their reactions. Uh, consume an unholy concoction of liquids, you know, like, I don't know, mixing milk, apple juice, soy sauce and cook into one and drinking it and making a reaction video. And then, you know, you could probably make that trend and tag people in it, you know. Um, Edit your video like this, and you are going to be successful. Definitely going to get popular. So, yeah, just edit your videos like that, and people are bound to watch you. Um, make silly signs. Have a cocky, overly lively persona that's you know too eccentric for its own good. Uh, upload videos of animals doing crazy stuff, things that are funny or cute animal videos, you know, you know they're all popular. Sometimes, you know, I'm guilty of watching some myself. Um, sometimes they're irresistible. Download fail videos. 
uh, without permission, mashed them up into an hour long video and uploaded. I know by experience that I watched some of these just in the background with friends and would kill time. And on the topic of success and all seriousness, um, this could be for you getting millions of views, subscribers and raking in some money using AdSense. Um, but then you can have personal success. Um, I would rather have five subscribers who continually engage with videos that I make, comment, whether it's good or bad, uh, discuss and share the same interests as me uh, on a regular basis, rather than 1,000 who never comment and probably don't exist. Um, views are nothing if you're not getting any comments, I would say. You know, actual engagement with the audience. And, you know, it's, I want to know that what I'm doing is entertaining or engaging in some way that'll make people discuss stuff that I'm talking about also. Um, but yeah, that's success can be measured in different ways and it's whatever you're aiming for. I have gained nearly 100 subscribers in the past two and a half months with this channel and that's just incredible. And thank you everyone who has helped me with this. You know, Luke for instance, I know he's given me quite a couple of mentions on his videos and uh, a lot of the other YouTubers that are, you know, thanks a lot for subscribing to me. You know, I probably wouldn't be making as many videos as I am without the encouragement and the good feedback I've been having. And I haven't really had negative comments yet. And I know, that, you know, the more popular you become, the more open you come to it. You know, you're always gonna have trolls and stuff, as you see many YouTubers talk about. And that's okay because, as doubtful as I am, you know, I can just shrug it off. You know, and what's entitled to an opinion. Uh, sometimes they can be bad opinions, of course. But yeah, uh, you can play the game and do the stuff that I listed that could make you popular. Um, and it really depends what you want to do and what makes you happy. And that's the, the core of what, you know, most people do when they come and make a YouTube channel. Uh, be yourself mostly and talk about stuff that you want to talk about. And uh, just keep your audience in mind sometimes, you know. No one wants to watch a two-hour video of you rambling about something. Um, but if you want to do that, that's okay. You do that. Um, but overall, just make content that you're happy with uploading. And stuff that even you want to see that's up. Because I know I'm trying to put up stuff that I haven't really seen on YouTube, such as reviews of certain movie movies uh, that I would like to see get more attention. So yeah, overall, just stick to doing that. We've now reached the end of the video with the final question, which is, who do you tag? And as I'm new to the game, I don't really have anyone I can tag. Uh, Luke basically tagged everyone that I wanted to tag, such as Ian and Ryan and all, and all that. Um, so actually, I don't have anyone to tag. Sorry. If I did, I would tag people. So if you're a movie YouTuber, um, check out all the other videos. Uh, check out, I'll put a link to Luke's video. He has a link to lots of other channels, and I'm sure lots of them are going to upload their own diary videos. So it was fun making this video, everyone. Um, be sure to comment, subscribe. I'd like to hear feedback, as always, as I've stated. Thanks again, everyone, for watching and staying to listen to my ramblings and shit talking at times um but yeah thanks everyone and i'll see you next time